السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم ٹو انادر کمپیوٹر سائنس لیکچر ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ سیکشن نمبر 2 اف اور نیو سلیبس دیٹ از ڈیٹا کمیونیکیشن اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو بی ڈسکسنگ سیکشن نمبر 2.1.1 میتھڈز اف ڈیٹا ٹرانسمیشن وین ایور ڈیٹا از ٹو بی ٹرانسمیٹڈ سو it is all it is never transmitted in a continuous uh, stream whenever data is to be sent over long distance especially it is usually usually broken up into tiny chunks or pieces called data packets why because sending a huge file sending a file in one piece is difficult to manage it is difficult to send it is difficult to make sure that there have been no error or alteration during the transmission whereas uh, breaking it down into tiny pieces into small pieces and then sending those pieces is easier to manage so the packets of data are usually very small they are typically not more than 64 kb bytes so they are much easier to manage and control rather than a long continuous stream of data now for example if you have a file of 6 mb uh, that basically means it has 6 multiplied by 1024 6144 kb bytes or kbs now if one packet size is 64 so third basically means that there would be 96 packets which would be sent they would be numbered 1 2 3 4 up till 96 okay but um, <coughs> so this is how packets are broken down all of the packets they need to be reassembled at the destination for the message to be decoded all the packets that are sent they are received one after the other by the receiver and then the receiver uh, puts them back together in one big file and then the message is decoded a data packet is also known as a data gram this is a rather very old name for it but the cambridge uh, still accepts it now what is the structure of a data packet or a data gram the structure is like this there are three parts a header a payload and a trailer now inside the header there are four things the ip address of the source or the sender the ip address of the destination or the receiver the sequence number of the packet like we discussed over here that if it, the, there is a file of uh, 6 mb it would be broken down into 96 packets so all of these packets they need to be numbered by packet 1 packet 2 packet 3 uh, and so on up till packet 96 so that the receiver <coughs> he can put together all the pieces just like a jigsaw puzzle in a in the proper sequence and then merge them together in order to receive or make the correct file if the packets uh, if the packets do not have a sequence number and they are joined together in any other combination other than the original combination then the message can be altered or it may become corrupt and totally unreadable lastly in the header the size of the packet in bytes that what is the size of the current packet is mentioned the, the payload is the part where the actual message lies it is of 64 kb bytes <coughs> and it contains the actual message which is to be transmitted and lastly the trailer contains two things a method of Id- identifying the end of the packet it contains a, a string of binary or a string of code that uh, by reading which the uh, receiver knows that okay this packet has ended over here and then there is some form of error checking method to ensure that this packet has been received successfully without any error for each packet the packet header consists of sender ip receiver ip sequence number and packet size and the header often also contains another value indicating how many packets are there in the total for this transmission 
now this is this rule or this thing is not followed by all the packets or all the protocols but these fo four things are always there in each and every header whereas some packets or some protocols have this optional fifth part and the payload consists of the original packet which is about 64 KB bytes <coughs> and the trailer has the identifier for end of packet and an error checking method now an error checking method to make sure the packet has been received successfully we use a CRC method cyclic redundancy check <coughs> now how this method works it is a part of your slavers this involves the sending computer adding up all the one bits in the payload inside the payload the number of bits which are one uh, sorry not the number of bits the bits which contain a value of one or all the one bits they are added together and uh, after binary addition whatever value is found out that value is converted into a hexadecimal number and then he that hexadecimal number is uh, stored in the trailer before sending when the packet arrives at its destination the receiver recalculates this process the receiver adds all the ones together in the payload and then convert the answer in hexadecimal and then the compute the receiver then compares this value with the one that is there in the actual packet trailer and if the two values are same then that means no transmission error has occurred the next thing which we have is packet switching whenever a packet is to be sent then uh, a router is a device which plays a key role in it a router receives a basically whenever a computer needs to send a data packet or a mess uh, whenever a computer needs to send a message then the computer sends that message to the router the computer breaks it into data packets and gives those data packets to the router your internet router or your internet switch then what does that router do it calculates a possible path from where the data packet can travel inside a network and how it can reach its destination <coughs> a router calculates two things the shortest path for sending a data packet for example if we have to send a message from A to B then what can be a shortest path 1 2 3 4 5 this in this has to go with 5 routers and if we go like this 1 2 3 4 that means this can be the shortest path so these calculations are made by a router that from <coughs> which router should I send the packet each packet is assessed for example the router can also send it like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 the router can also send it like this but this would mean that there would be 8 routers or this would be a very long path so the router calculates the shortest path for sending a packet that how can I send a packet uh, with the shortest possible number of routers in between or the shortest possible path and as well as the optimum or the best path for sending that data like for example we saw 1 2 3 4 this would be the shortest path but what if over here the network is already very much crowded what if the router has already sent 16 packets through this route in that case the router is not going to follow this path instead it is going to follow maybe this one it contains one two three four five this uh, route is a little longer it has one additional router in between or one additional device in between but this path is empty if you are going from one place to another you don't just calculate that which road will ta take me over there in the least possible time you also see that on which road there is a traffic jam and on which road there is not a traffic jam like for example if you need to go from let's suppose a uh, drag road station 
<coughs> to Sadar, then you can obviously you would choose Shara Faisal. But what if the Shara Faisal is tightly packed? There is a huge traffic jam or some um, power show going on. Then obviously you will have to go to Millennium, and from there you can go to through the National Stadium Road. You can go to, to Sadar. You would have a longer way, but at least the road would be empty, so you would reach early. So this process is known as packet switching. That deciding for each and every data packet, that uh, how can the it be sent through a shortest possible path and through the best possible path. It is a method of data transmission in which a message is broken up into a number of packets. Okay, each packet can then be sent independently from a start point to end point at their destination. The packets will need to be reassembled into correct order using the information sent in the header. At, at each stage in the transmission, there are nodes that contain a router. Each router will determine which route the packet needs to take in order to reach its destination. Okay, like for example, there is a message of a one. 20 kbs or uh, 320 kbs so by the rule of 64 kb there would be four packets for it so that basically means that one two three four five there would be five packets now um, or wait i'll just uh, draw them using different colors so you can understand So one, two, three, four, five, five packets. Now when these packets are sent, router A is going to receive all these five packets. Then let's suppose for this black packet, he decides router two, router one, three, and four. And the first packet arrived. Now for purple router, it goes from here till here. And router two decides router one is busy. So A he may it may send it to router five which is going to check that out of all the possible paths which is the free one or which is the shortest one it may send it to router 8 router 8 may send it to router 7 then router 10 and then it is going to reach router b but maybe meanwhile the this third packet might have already been reached As you can see, it was first, second, third, fourth, and fifth black, purple, sky blue, orange, and green. Whereas over here, black is received first, <coughs> then orange, which, which was the fourth packet, then sky blue, which was the third packet, then purple, and then green. Okay, so that basically means that the packet can reach because each router decides where to send the packet to the packets can reach out of sync or out of order the first one may reach at third position or the last one may reach first or the third one may reach at fifth position and so on so it is the work of the router or the computer to reassemble all these packets and for that they need this this part sequence number of the packet okay now why do we do packet switching the benefits of packet switching are that there is no need 
to tie up a single communication line there can be multiple options when I, the packet wherever it would find a possible <coughs> possibility of traveling the packet will go from there it is possible to overcome failed busy or faulty lines by simply rerouting the packet if let's suppose there been has a there have been a breakage between these two routers then this router can simply detect okay whatever packet i am sending over here i am not getting any acknowledgement for that so the router can simply send the send it via this line from here like this instead of sending it this so it is easy to reroute packets instead of losing them it is relatively easy to expand package usage means you can send more packets at the same time while router uh, packet one is traveling from here 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 and here the rest of the nodes are or routers are free they can be used to send packets simultaneously and a higher data transmission rate is possible because you are able to send more than one packet at the same time now there are some drawbacks of this as well packets can be lost and need to be resent be this method is more prone to errors with real time streaming for example if you are watching a live sporting event or if you are on a live video call and if the packets re uh, reach you out of sync or in not in the proper order then you are going to have a lot of lagging in the video call or in the video quality there is a delay at the destination whilst the packet are being reordered when the destination per, uh, at the destination when the computer is rerouting uh, reassembling the packets so there is a little delay between getting the message and actually being able to open it so what happens is that since each router decides where to send the next packet then sometimes what happens is that the packets are sent too far away and from r4 okay like see pack this packet has traveled almost the whole network this is a waste of resources we do not want our packets to randomly travel from one router to another endlessly so what we do is some packets are uh, get lost because they keep bouncing around from router to router and never actually reach their destination how that uh, is that made possible for example the packet came over here then it decided that this path is free this router decided this path is free it, this one decided this is free this is free and then it decided this is free this one uh, decided okay this is free then this one decided this is free this one decided okay r3 is busy r8 is busy so this is free and then it sent it over here and then it sent it over there and then over there and then over here and then over here then over there then over there see the packet is basically moving in a circle because each router independently decides on which path to send the packet so sometimes the packets are stuck in a loop or a circle instead of reaching the destination they keep on moving in at the same place or between a few routers so in order to uh, do that in order to uh, prevent that if this keeps up lost packets would mount up clogging the network they are going to eat up all the available resources in the network and every line is going to become uh clogged or traffic jammed to overcome this a method called hopping is used a hop number is added to the header of each packet and this number is reduced by 1 every time it leaves a router each packet has a maximum hop number to start with once a hop number reaches 0 and the packet hasn't reached reached its destination the packet is deleted when it reaches the next router the missing packet will then be flagged by the receiving computer and a request to resend this packets would be made it works like this this is how packet hopping works so this is the first router to start the to send the packet in a network and over here this is the starting number let's suppose 10 now 
from router 3 it went to router 5 router 8 router 11 15 and 21 and so on each time the router makes a hop it then the hop number is uh, decre uh, decremented or decreased by one if the packet reaches zero and it has still not uh, reached its destination then the packet is simply de deleted without any consent whatsoever and then the at the receiving end when the receiver is rearranging all the packets the receiver is going to know okay packet number 15 is missing so it is going to send an acknowledgement message to the sender that please send packet number 15 again i have not received it this is how packet hopping works now these are some practice questions the trailer in a packet will use one form of error checking explain what is meant by a CRC cyclic redundancy check the payload contains the following data use this data to show the receiving computer can verify that the received payload was error free okay and number question number two explain how is it possible for packets to be lost during transmission describe how it is possible for a system to deal with lost packets and explain why you think packet switching might improve data security these are ex exam style questions so try to attempt them and uh, let me know that if you were successful in attempting them or not i'll post the answers below in the description I'll see you guys in the next lecture. Take care. Allah Hafiz.